Hi, I'm Tony Northup, and to tease our upcoming Photoshop video book, here's a trick I've developed to blur the background. I know you, you might have a different way to do it. There are lots of different ways to get things done in Photoshop. I'm just going to show you the way that works for me. So I'll flip over to Photoshop here. And the first thing I always do is to separate the foreground and the background layers. So, uh, you know, I always like to keep the background layer just locked. So I'm just going to duplicate this layer. And hide that. So I'm going to try to select Chelsea and make her her own layer. And there's just a ton of different ways to select somebody. So I'll show you one of the newer tools for separating the foreground and the background. On the select menu, I'll select focus area. And this causes Photoshop to actually look for the parts of the picture that are sharp versus those that are a little bit blurry. So it kind of makes a smart decision and separates it for you. And, you know, if it gets not enough or too much, you can kind of crank this up or down. But the default here was actually pretty, pretty good. It was pretty smart about it. I'm going to output this to a new layer with the layer mask. And notice the red background here is because I have this overlay view selected. That just happens to be my favorite way to view it. Before I click OK, I'm going to click Refine Edge. I like the Refine Edge tool. The Smart Radius tool is particularly smart. So I'm just moving that over. I'll select Smart Radius here, and then I just, I just crank this up. <laughs> sometimes I find that cranking it up all the way gives me the best results, and sometimes having it lower does better. But you can see all the way down, it, it's looking for the hair here, but leaving it kind of jagged. And that would be really ugly if I were to go with that. But cranking it up, now it starts to look at the difference between the hair and the background. This is a particularly tough picture because it was just taken in the office, so it's not on a green screen. There's no clear way to separate her from the background. I'll show you how to, to work around that in just a little bit. And then I always decontaminate the colors and uh, output it to a new layer with a layer mask. So I'll hit Enter there to open it up. So now if we zoom back by hitting Control-0, you can see we have Chelsea as her own layer. I can turn the background on here. So this is a really good start. Now what I want to do is to create a separate layer just for the background. And why we do this will become clear in just a little bit. So I'll take this Chelsea layer here. And actually, we don't need this layer. Let's hide Chelsea for a bit. Now I'm going to make a layer just for the wall, just for the background. And so I'm going to select Chelsea and by right clicking this and then adding the mask to the selection. This layer mask here separates Chelsea from the background. With this selected, I'm going to select my wall here and I'm just going to delete Chelsea. <laughs> this will give me a clean background that I can modify and uh, edit however I want without worrying about how she and the background overlap. If I were to hit Shift F5 here and just have Content Aware fill her in, what you'll see is a kind of a weird halo around here where the selection just wasn't perfect. So as you can see, when I deselect that, that's e eerie and creepy. <laughs> so I'm going to hit Control Alt Z to undo that. And before I remove her, I'm going to go to Select, Modify, and then Expand. And I'm just going to expand the selection. So if for this particular picture, 30 pixels is probably pretty good. So now. She has a little bit of room around her. I'll do Shift F5 again, choosing Content Aware here. OK, so the Content Aware field, this is a really complex background with these vertical lines. So it was not perfect, but it's OK. It's pretty good. I can do a little bit of quick cleaning up because you can see some flyaways got stuck in the background here. And so I'm just going to clean up this background and kind of remove it. Spot healing brush is pretty good for this. Let's get a little bit of a softer edge on that. Now, I could try to go back and, and clean this up. It doesn't have to be perfect because, after all, we're going to blur it. But now you can see we have Chelsea and the wall completely separated on, on two different layers. 
So now there's a whole lot of really powerful things that I can do to make this look good really easily. And, and for example, one of them would be to adjust the brightness of the background. She was lit up really nicely and the background itself looks kind of dull. So I could add an adjustment layer to the wall here and crank the brightness up without affecting Chelsea. Going back to the wall layer, it's a good time for me to, to peer a little bit closer at it and, and look and see a couple of flaws. So I can see, like this is a good time to use the clone stamp tool. So I hit S to select the clone stamp tool. And with vertical lines like this, it's, it's pretty much easiest just to clone it right out. So now let's blur that wall. There are a couple of really easy ways to, to blur it and provide that kind of natural bouquet look. And there is a specific filter for lens blur. But for now, we don't really need it because the background is, is very simple. It's just flat. So I actually prefer to use the blur gallery here and just do a field blur because this tool just works really quickly. So I can just crank it up and see the effects in, in real time. So this is with no blur and I can just dial it up more and more and more. And if you go too much, it looks unnatural. But I can add a little bit of blur, separate her a little bit more. That's pretty good. But you know what? I always say, make your changes and then back it down a little bit. <laughs> so I'm going to back it off a little bit. And then I'll click up OK up here to commit the blur on the background. So that's with my new blur and that's without. And you can see it's enough to separate or some simulate having a more expensive lens than I actually had. But at the same time, I think it still looks pretty realistic. So before we finish this up, I'm just going to zoom in a little bit and look for any kind of flaws that might be here. And, and one of the challenges is flyways. Flyways are just always really rough. There are people whose job it is just to fix flyways, but you know what, go into a department store, go into the Gap and look at the big posters that they have, and you'll probably see flyways. And if they've retouched the background, you'll see them. They, they will be rough. So don't feel too bad if your flyway editing job isn't perfect. This is Chelsea's layer where she's separated. So I'm going to select the layer mask and any part of the picture that I paint black with the brush tool here is, is going to just disappear. So I can make Chelsea's head disappear. Scary, I know. But what I'm going to do is actually just make these flyaways disappear. So I'm going to use getting the edge right is the biggest part of the challenge here. You might have to adjust the hardness of the edge up or down. I'm just going to go in and with a moderately hard edge, go in and just remove some of these stray flyaways. And depending on the amount of time you, you want to commit, <laughs> you can make this more or less perfect. But for the most part, I just want to get rid of the more unnatural looking flyaways. Everybody has some flyaways, but if you remove too many, that itself is going to look unnatural. And this is why separating the layers is so easy for editing, because now that I've separated them, I can just paint in the layer mask to remove flyaways in a pretty perfect way. Here's a little just an artifact, something that I can just do that again. Just remove really easily because I have a separate layer here. So I'm just kind of following the line of her hair and being as smooth about it as possible. How much time you put into this depends on how closely the picture is going to be inspected. This were for stock. I'd probably end up putting an hour into this. Okay, that's not perfect, but it's pretty good. As I zoom out, uh, I can see that there there is one flaw here in that this little section of her hair didn't get separated. So it's not brightened like the rest of the wall is. It's a little too dark. And uh, to actually select the background here, 
would be basically impossible from all those hairs to edit just the background. An easier thing to do here, this is kind of a hack, I'm just going to remove it. <laughs> I'm just going to clone right over it. So my preferred way to do this is to use the lasso tool here by pressing L, and I'll just try to circle it as, as good as I can. And then I will do a series of content aware fill, probably take more than one to get it absolutely perfect. So I, I really roughed that in, but let's get that a little more precise. I'm holding on the Alt key to deselect things that I've previously selected. Uh, you don't have to get it perfect the first time. You can always just get it close enough and then go back and add or remove from the layer mask, from the selection rather. So with that selected, Shift F5 to bring up the Content Aware Fill tool again. Oh, I had the layer mask selected. And uh, that's, it actually did a pretty good job of that. <laughs> There's some little flaws here. I'll just select them, content or fill. And then to kind of hide my hacky work <laughs> even more, I'm going to just grab the uh, dodge tool, rather the burn tool, to make it a little bit darker. Use a nice soft edge, low exposure here. Let's just hide our sloppy work. So, not bad. That's the after. The background is nicely blurred. She looks natural. I was able to separately edit the foreground and the background. Here's another thing you can do with the background separated like that. I'm going to straighten the background and actually zoom it in so it fills the frame with just this white door. To do that, I'm going to go to Edit and then Free Transform. And this is just transforming the wall layer here. So the first thing I'll do is I'll straighten it. I'm moving my cursor out to the edge so it looks like a little rotation tool. So I'll rotate that until it's about level. I can hit Control apostrophe to get some vertical grid lines in here. And that looks like it lines up pretty level. So turn that off. Now I can just grab the corner and drag it out. I'm holding the Shift key so it zooms it out. Let's make sure all the corners are covered up. Just want to show you that fun trick that you can do when you have the background separated that provides a lot of power. Let's take a look at a little more complex example. This example, look at these two cool people. The background is not completely flat. We have multiple layers of background here. So as before, the first thing I'm going to do is separate the foreground and the background layers by selecting my uh, superstars here. And let's, let's start by trying out the focus area selection tool. It's kind of my new favorite tool. Okay, so this pretty much separating the foreground and the background. So I'm going to output this to a new layer with a layer mask by clicking OK. Well, actually, let's do refine edge first. So I can see I'll have a little bit of touching up to do. So this is now our foreground layer and it's not perfect. So I am going to use the quick selection tool to select these other parts that need to be removed. A 
Let's pull up the refine edge tool again. Okay. So now I've selected that. And I did this in kind of a funny way, but <laughs> what I'll do is I'll take what it just selected and make it into a selection. And uh, I didn't need to make a new layer for that. That was a mistake. But I'll select the layer mask here. And let me see. Let me just remove this part. Now I'm just going to paint that black in the layer mask. So I'm going to use the paint bucket tool. Turn off contiguous so it'll fill in all the sections at once and just fill that in with fire. You can see it got a little aggressive there, so I'm going to take the paint brush, fill some of this in with white. You can see I lost some of his hand here, so let's oh, wrong direction. Let's fill this in. So now we have our foreground selected. I'll duplicate the background layer here. We'll call it middle ground. And with the middle ground selected, uh, what I could do is just apply the lens blur tool here to crank up the blur. So with the lens blur tool, it, it tries to simulate the blur you'd actually get from a camera, including doing all the mathematical calculations around the number of blades in the iris. And for that reason, it is very accurate. It is very accurately simulate blur, but it's also computationally intensive, so it can be kind of slow, and you'll kind of see that. And, and the way you'll crank up the amount of lens blur is by just adjusting the radius here. And you can see it's doing it to the entire picture because I didn't remove them from this. But as I click OK, I'll select it. But now what you'll see is this weird kind of halo around them. And that's because I did not remove them from that. So that's why you kind of go in and, and edit them out of the background layer. So before we go and apply that, I'm going to grab this selection here, add mask to selection, go in here, and then We'll do the content where it fell. So I'll get the selection of the two people in the foreground here by right clicking the layer mask and clicking add mask to selection. And then, as before, I need to select modify expand and expand it by some amount so it's actually kind of enclosing them and there's not going to be that weird border area. Now I can select my middle ground layer, press shift F5 to do content or fill. So if I hide the foreground layer here you can see they'll kind of disappear and uh, it's going to look really silly down here but that's all going to be hidden completely. The only important part is where they kind of overlap. It just needs to look kind of natural. And this all actually looks pretty natural. Now I'll take you down the wrong path briefly by going to Filter Blur and Lens Blur. And I'll show you the Lens Blur tool and what it can do. So if I really crank up the radius here, you can see it, it does a very good job of simulating what the actual lens blur would look like by doing these very complex calculations that include 
say the curvature of the blades of the iris and the number of blades in the iris. So you can very carefully simulate actual lens blur, including the effect of specular highlights. It's not usually all that necessary. I just kind of wanted to show you the lens blur tool. It, it does have a very intelligent depth mapping thing, which I'm not going to use for this, but I'll show you how to do it later. So with that selected, if I were now to pop our people into the foreground, you can see it, it doesn't look too bad, except there's something unnatural about it. It can bump you a little bit because these trees are blurred and the background is blurred, but the background, the further background here should actually be blurred much more. And for that reason, it's unnatural. Also, we have a rough edge here that we can fix in just a little bit. So what I actually need to do is besides separating the foreground and the background, I need to actually add a separate layer for the deep background back there. So I'm going to undo that blur and then duplicate this and make a background layer. So let's hide our couple here and we'll do the best we can to select this. This is a tough selection because all these trees are a little bit blurry. So when it over selects, I hold down the Alt key to go in and kind of deselect those regions. Let's try the Refine Edge tool and see if it will refine this for me at all. So not a perfect job. Uh, I will go ahead and blur, add a little bit more to the layer mask here. I'm going to reset these to black and white. And using my brush tool, just paint in some of the edges here. Need to select the layer mask. And I'm just going to kind of remove where I see these tree tops, so they're not going to be affected by the extra blur. Ultimately, this is going to be a subtle change, which means it doesn't have to be completely perfect, and it should still be pretty natural looking. Also, because of the nature of trees and the kind of soft edges, it would be really impossible to get it perfect. It's one of those times where it's definitely faster just to get it right in camera and use the right lens. This is kind of a last ditch effort. So now we have a background, a middle ground, and our foreground. Get rid of some of these extra layers. I don't want to overdo it, I just want to do a little bit. Click OK. Now for the distant background, I'll repeat that. I'm using the field blur tool here rather than the lens blur tool just because it's so much faster. So the last one was at 17 pixels. This one seems to be a little bit higher. But not too much. Less is more. So we're looking pretty good. I do need to fix this really rough edge here. 
And the way I'll do that is by selecting the layer mask here, which separates the foreground from the background. And uh, I'm just going to use a nice soft edge, low hardness here. And I'm just going to paint black to pull some of this into the background. So I'm hitting X to switch between the black and the white here. Big, there we go. So I'm just painting the edge. So instead of being white, it's going to be gray on the borders here. Let's set the opacity down a little bit. No harsh transitions. So there you have it, not perfect, but not bad. We can quickly look at the original by just bringing up the background layer here. This is our foreground, which did we didn't change at all. The middle ground added a little bit of blur, and then the distant background back there. It separates them a little bit from the background, but still provides a natural look. If you found this useful, give me a like, subscribe, share with your friends. Thanks.